right, so let's continue our journey in the Linux kernel. Uh, this time, Wolfram will discuss object lifetime issues in various subsystems. So please welcome Wolfram. Thank you. So happy that you uh, that you are here and. Uh, I think despite the kind of boring title of the talk, I think it's going to be quite entertaining and fun, hopefully. Um, before we dive into the topic, I need to really set some basics straight, because if, you, if, if there's a some level, some only half understanding, then you get easily confused, because it is a complex topic. But if I first ask, um, okay, this is a rough outline, basic problem, results, conclusion, nothing special about it. Um, who in this audience does not about know about reference counting? Cool, awesome crowd. We can skip this. I have lots of slides, so I about ha I'm happy about every slide I can skip. Um, so um, the Linux kernel also has some uh, way of reference counting, which um, is embedded for mostly in a, in a struct called, uh, the reference counting itself is a struct kref. There's some documentation about it. Um, this is mostly tied into a struct K object. There's also documentation about it if you really want to know about it. And But most importantly for this talk, this struct K object is embedded into a struct device. And this is like um, the key struct now for uh, the Linux driver model, which we especially important for the research I was doing here. So it's all about struct device, creating devices, and those devices are reference counted and should only be gone when the reference count is zero. To modify the reference count, we have get device, put device. Um, yeah, that's about that. So then I assume who does not know the difference between physical and logical devices? Yay. Good. So we have physical and logical devices. I, I want to extend a little um, that beside the physical, he, here's the platform device, which is tied to some hardware. It has memory as an IOQ. Here's the user space side. It's not, it's a struct CDEF, so it's a little bit different, but it exports functionality to uh, user space. In most cases here, we have an intermediate device, which is also a logical device. So there's a struct device involved. In the I2C world, where I mainly work, it's uh, called struct I2C adapter, which is basically abstracting away the hardware difference. So if someone from user space or from kernel wants to say, I just want an I2C transfer, it, con it talks to this adapter. And how this works in reality is done with the platform device. So this is one layer of abstraction, uh, also usable in the kernel, but it's important. It's another struct device. It's a logical device and it has its own lifetime. It is reference counted. Basics. The problem. <laughs> um, Let's start. One, one annoying thing about this is uh, the problems are rare and just coming off. If you're doing a regular uh, work cycle, it is usually like this, so you don't see them so often like other problems. When you boot, the uh, kernel finds a platform device. That platform decides, hey, I'm an I2C driver and give me an I2C adapter so I can expose my functionality. Kernel happily does that. So we have now a struct I2C adapter already with a reference count of one because the guy or rather the code <coughs> who um, wants to expose the functionality, of course, has a reference count. Later then, user space comes along and says, hey, uh, give me your functionality. I want to talk to that device. And so, yeah, okay, it connects to that and we have a reference count of two. So far, so good. Then somewhere in user space is done, either the device is removed or the device is just closed, doesn't matter. This is not uh, having a reference count anymore, the reference count is going to one. And then when we unbind the driver using sysfs or reboot the system, the platform device says, okay, I'm going away, please delete this, struct, uh, this adapter. It calls delete adapter, ref count goes to zero. So this, uh, it's not reference counted, uh, this can go any, this can go now, no reference count anymore. And then later in the uh, power of this platform device can also go. So no problems with that. But if you remember the previous slide, the, when there was a reference count of two, there are two candidates to go away. 
So it also could happen that the platformist device is going away while the character device still has a reference to this intermediate, intermediate device. This is alone a whole set of problems, but it's not the main thing I want to talk about here. But you can imagine that if you're not carefully checking here pointers you might have into that structure, you have null pointer differences. And even if you check for that, you have to really be careful not to run into races that between the check where you do that and the platform device going away, whole set of problems. Uh, but with the previous talks by Laurent and Bartosz, they were focusing on managed devices. L Laurent said DEFM KZ alloc this function which allocates memory is harmful, Barter said. No, it's not. That sounds like a contradiction. I don't think they are both so far away, but um, this is anyhow, this gave me the idea, okay, I want to research that. And what is the problem with, uh, if you use managed device, or especially allocate DEFM with DEFM KZ alloc? Like in I2C, there are subsystems uh, where the platform, the physical device, needs some private struct to operate. I mean, this is pretty common. You need to store some state machine or whatever, so we have a struct, private struct here. But like I2C kind of expects you to have uh, this I2C adapter, this intermediate uh, device in the private struct. And oh, where's my pointer? There it is. But this is, now we're mixing and if we use DEFMKZ alloc, we attach the lifetime of this private object to the platform device. And, but we have an intermediate device with a struct, separate struct device, which has it, its own lifetime. We're mixing them. Ooh, 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 this is dangerous. This is really dangerous. And when uh, we use this add adapter, the system goes live. So there it, we open the possibility that user space or other kind of other users from kernel may come in and increase the reference count. So what then is really bad is let's assume the example before there's a uh, this intermediate device and it has still a reference from the user space and the platform device goes away. Now if we use defm kz alloc at the end of the remove of uh, this platform device, it will free the complete private structure. And there is this intermediate device in it. So we actually killed a device which has a ref count of one because user space was still connected to it. That's super bad because, hey, that's one of the promise of an operating system. If there's an a ref counted object, it's not going away. So, uh, if subsystems do that, that need, they need some kind of protection to not let this device go away, although the platform device is going away. And now here comes DEFRES or these managed devices. If you, use, if you don't use it and use KZ alloc and K3 directly, there actually is a way where you can do it right if you're super careful. There are still a lot of ways to shoot yourself in the foot, but at least there's a way where you can get it right. Namely, we, c we will go into detail later, but namely if you use this release function which every device has. If you populate that, then you can get out of this mess. But with def mkz alloc, it will always be wrong. Because even if you populate this call re remove callback, which waits until all calls are gone, Def MKZ alloc will always remove once this device is gone, depending, it not, doesn't matter if here's a ref count or not. So def MKZ alloc in that context is always wrong. So that is why um, I would say def, uh, this is not, it's not causing the problem. You, as you, can, you can have the problems without def res as well, but it makes it easier to fall into the trap. That is the problem. The kind of good thing is, because it, al it is always wrong, we can detect it, we can scan for it. Because I don't need to scan for exception. If I see that pattern, it's always wrong. And since I love Coxinelle, I wanted to say, okay, <laughs> who else? 
in the kernel, it does it like this. So the kind of uh, maybe little ad academic formulated question is which subsystem use structs with embedded K objects and allow these uh, structs to be allocated with def mkz alloc. To make it more real, think about I2C. I2C has such a struct, I2C adapt, namely I2C adapter. It has an I2C device in it, and it are, uh, wants drivers to use def mkz alloc, or it allows, it not wants, but it allows. So sadly, as a maintainer, I have to say, I, I know I2C is one of the candidates. Uh, who else is there? So I uh, ran one coccinel script to give scan all um, include files and find structs which include a struct device directly or indirectly because if you just do one iteration you won't find all. It can go up to many iterations until you get finally to the struct device. I used three because my poor computer was busy enough with that. And I found six, around 630 structs. So this is uh, quite a lot, I think. And from then, with these 600 structs, uh, I searched, okay, and where in the kernel are those structs allocated with def m kz alloc? Because this is a potentially dangerous situation. So I, had 600, I generated 630 coccinelle files, which I then ran, and then I got some outputs. And then I wanted to know um, how do these subsystems protect against this un too early freeing of the embedded struct device? That is basically my research question. So far so good or somebody already left behind? Okay. <laughs> so a little bit of a first result. The good news is I got uh, less hits than I anticipated. So actually, I can show you in this talk all of the hits I got. Hey, that's good. But the bad news is that with all the hits, I s although they have some kind of protection, I still have issues with them. And more or less, I basically, they all need fixing. OK, uh, I'm brave again. I will do live demos. What could go wrong? Um, let's see. Can you read that? Okay, then I will just... So you're all waiting, something is going wrong, right? <laughs> okay, uh, here we have the serial console and here we have a telnet. Both point, it's a Renaissance board, of course. Thank you for giving me such nice hardware. <laughs> and a good candidate is UART. Um, it was not in my list, so it doesn't look, uh, it, it wasn't reported by my research results, but I still wanted to give you what the end result should look like. I can't give you the bad results because they're bad. So um, here on the right side, there will be the user space side. So I will open a device exported by the UART layer. And on that side, I will now unbind the device while someone has in user space has a reference to it. Ah, so go to Sysbus, uh, what is it, TTY class. I always mix that up. TTY SCO uh, device drive. Oh, which device was it? I need to check this. It's E6, E6, C5. Okay, device driver. Echo E6, C5, unbind. Okay, I, had, I have some debug options enabled here. You see objects got released, that's fine. 
the user space exited normally. It may have exited with an uh, error code, but this is still gracefully. We didn't have any delay here when returning from unbind. This is what we want. We unbind, we get it back immediately, and the user space deals with the problem. Okay, good case. There, there we want to, go to end. Ah, yeah, MTD. So um, MTD also exposes devices to user space, and I will just open one of them. Um, no, 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 it's for that was the wrong one. MTD zero read only. So I just assigned this file to a file descriptor. It's basically opened. It does nothing. It's just open, right? But it increases the reference count. Now let's unbind this one. This is a class again, I think. Yeah, MTD null read only device driver. Uh, I'm now at the SPI nor driver and I, I unbind this exposed SPI. It's, it has nothing to do with SPI. We're on the MTD layer level, so it's S SPI nor. Yeah, thank you. So let's see how MTD acts. Ooh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it's still crashing. Hmm. So lots of things going wrong there. <laughs> um, and I think the machine is even in a such instable machine. I think I can't reboot now. No. It's. Uh, Okay, uh, I will, uh, luckily we have a reset button somewhere. Okay, this was, that was MTD. So, so uh, struct SPI nor embed struct MTD info, which embed struct device? That's why I said you have to do an iterative process. No? Okay, it crashes, as you see, as you saw, when uh, while MTD read open is opened, I couldn't find any protection mechanism in the MTD core code. I mean, it might have been that there is one and it's not perfect, but I did not find one. But I found this comment from March 2009. <laughs> Revisit. Once MTD uses the driver model better, whoever allocates MTD info will probably want to use the release hook. I think this is probably right. <laughs> so, um, with this, I think there's a better option than uh, using the release hook, but that we will leave that for later. But you see, okay, MTD is seriously broken since ever. I see. <laughs> Um, where we are? Here we are. So, uh, okay, where's the telnet thingy? It's up, it's up. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I square Z zero, I think, yes. So I open I square Z zero. Uh, it's a character device. Okay, you want to see a crash, right? <laughs> um, uh, this was platform drivers. Is, uh, I use always uh, is, SysFS, you can go this way or that way, and I always use the path I can remember most. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there is it. Echo E65. You're, you're making bets already? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> okay, it doesn't crash. This is good. So it has some kind of protection. But as you can see, the unbind does not come back. Bartosz, in his talk, so, uh, to, uh, 
mentioned it was a deadlock, but it's not a deadlock. Uh, deadlock is a situation where you cannot get out. This is a, an uninterruptible wait. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, and if you have an embedded device where you just have one terminal or shell or whatever, so then it can meet, mean that you're stuck. But luckily we have this uh, terminal, uh, this telnet client here. So I can remove this reference count from user space and then you see things happening, devices get removed and the system is in a consistent state. So it doesn't crash, that is good. It blocks, which is not perfect. Uh, uh, embed struct device, blocks uninterruptible. I2C delete adapter waits until all references are gone using a struct completion. I will explain this uh, more in more detail on the next slide, but we also have a great comment. <laughs> Fix me, this code is, co is old code and should ideally be replaced by an alternative which results in decoupling the lifetime of the struct device from the adapter like SPI do, does. Yes, that is still true as of today, as it was in 2015. And the problem is known for much longer. It's just, I put the command there in 2015, so I won't forget. <laughs> and because I always forget the details, I made this talk because I can now look up, uh, up in the future to remember what actually is going wrong. <laughs> so, how, so why does it not crash? Okay. Uh, this device is meant to, it's unbind, it should go away, right? So uh, the remove callback calls i squash delete adapter and there's this wait for completion. It waits because there's still a reference um, to this intermediate device. When the user space closes this or uh, deletes or gives up this reference and this ref count goes to zero, then uh, the release callback of the device is called, or yeah, I squash core populated that before. So when this release callback is called, we know the ref count is zero, and then we call the complete and say, hey, it's done. Finally, the waiting is over, completion is completed. And when the completion uh, has been signaled, it's done, the waiting ended, and everything can be freed safely now. This is why i 2 c has to wait, but it doesn't crash. Ide ideally, it would be uh, returning right away, and if uh, uh, user space would connect to the user to i 2 c dev device, it would say, sorry, all my functionality is gone, and keep saying it that long until user space says, ah, come on, gi I give up. There are some other subsystems which have the same approach of protection, this one is I3C. Um, the master controller embeds a struct device. I couldn't really test it because I don't have I3C hardware. Regarding their own master controller thing, there might be a protection. I haven't fully understood it, uh, but I, ne I did not go into detail because for them, sadly, they have I2C backwards compatibility. So they embed a struct I2C adapter and use i 2 c delete adapter to remove it. So we kind of caught i3c and said, hey, you're with us now, and uh, you, need, you need to wait until i 2 c is fixed until you can fix your stuff. Sorry. I found another subsystem doing that. It's called NTB. Does anyone know that? Okay, a few, cool. Uh, Non-transparent bridge or something? It's probably not too interesting for embedded devices. Uh, IC Express can do magic things with it. It also has, uh, I, but just by code review, uh, so my research, uh, my Coxinel scripts told me there might be such a subsystem, and I reviewed it and I found there, okay, they also have a complete completion. So, which I think is worth fixing. That was the surprising result, Word IO. Okay, let's check. What could go wrong? So, so, ah, I don't need it. <laughs> CD, this, 
class. No, it's a bus or whatever. Okay. Then now you got it. Now I'm lost. <laughs> uh huh. Where's my driver? What a pity. Hmm. I don't know how to fix it right now, which is sad for you because it would have crashed. <laughs> <laughs> um, even without me opening some additional reference count from user space. How come? Oh no, let's uh, go back here again. Because I have a debug option turned on. <laughs> um, virtu uh, virtual I.O. device embeds a struct device and by design their subsystem forces all users of their subsystem to use a release callback of this virtual, virtual I.O. device they created. And that is I think it's not very elegant to push that responsibility to drivers, but it does work. If you allocate the struct device, you make sure that the freeing option is connected to this actual device, and then you don't touch it y yourself anymore. That basically works. But one driver, this MMIO driver, got it wrong and still used DevRes with it. And if you enable this uh, debug option, which nobody knows unless you're working with object lifetimes, um, then it fails. Why? The good case. Why, uh, how all the other drivers work. You uh, allocate with KZ alloc, not managed, uh, the virtual I.O. device, which is reference counted. And then from that virtual I.O. device, you populate the release callback with a ex accompanying freeing option. Only when the reference count is zero, then we're freeing that memory, not before. And then you do something with the device and then uh, on unbind, this device is, on the, the terminology of the driver core is not good here. The device is deleted, which is, means it's taken away from the driver model. You cannot uh, connect to it anymore. You cannot get a reference code anymore, but it is the memory of the struct device is still there because uh, the, in the driver model we call it release if you want to release the memory. So you cannot, co uh, the device is deleted, you cannot connect to any, it anymore and because let's assume we're the only user, the reference count goes, uh, reference count goes to zero. And now it actually which one comes first is not so important because um, let's assume we're the only user reference count goes zero immediately we free this uh, we free the memory and then uh, we can also free all other resources connected to this platform device but it could be the other way around um, because this uh, intermediate device takes care of itself we could delete this first and wait until all references are gone and then delete this one Understandable? Not so much? Where's the problem? C can you say it? No, pity. Shall I try again? <laughs> okay. The problem with DevRes is now that it totally breaks these assumptions. Uh, we're allocating memory with DevMKZ alloc and populate the release function not with k-free but with def mk free because we use this one for allocating 
which uh, sounds like a good match. We do something with the device, unbind like before, reference count goes to zero. And now comes the difference, and this is where de de DefRest is really harmful. Once this device is gone, because it was allocated with here with defmk.alloc, it will delete the device nonetheless. There is a release callback populated, but um, DefRest will still kill the memory or free the memory before that. And that is why we got the splat, because then when the reference count is going to zero, and this debug option, what, do, what does it? It delays the release. If, if this is all going instantly, like we go here to zero, and right away this will be removed, and this will be removed, you will not notice anything, because you're lucky with the ordering. But if this debug option waits a certain time, like a few hundred milliseconds, until we release the memory, then you get the DefRest problem, because DefRest uh, will remove this, and including this, and after a delay, the driver core will try to call the release function and all is, is the uh, device is gone. There is no release, uh, um, release function anymore. Boom. Not good. Um, this is, like I said, uh, subsystems which say we use a re I request you to re use a release function, it's technically, you can argue that it works, but I really don't like this approach. If you look here at the slide, there were mul multiple tries to get the lifetime thingies right. And so there was the initial submission, and then the driver core found out there's no release function, that's forbidden, so it emits a warning. So what did the first one guy do? Well, it put an empty release function, so the warning goes away. Yeah. And then someone else noticed, uh, no, th it shouldn't be uh, empty, so it added this def mk3 just to match it, but still not understanding what was the actual problem. And while trying to get that, uh, this guy got the, um, all the def m management wrong, so he needed another fix up. So at least the def m part was consistent again, but it was still wrong until a few minutes ago. I sent a patch. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I think we have consensus on this one. Uh, Bartosz formulated this in his talk. When you listen to the complete talk of, of Laurent in what, which he gave at Plumbers, people were also like this. It is not a good idea to put the responsibility of this lifetime management to driver authors. I think most people agree that these layers who introduce a struct device should take care of it and not say, uh, here, you do the work. Experience says it goes often wrong, very often. So uh, I could fix this subsystem. It is okay now, but still I think the approach in general needs fixing. There's uh, another quite new subsystem. I'm not super familiar with, it's a bit scary uh, actually, um, the auxiliary bus, it also expects that you um, populate the release function. Unlike other, they're pretty explicit about it, so let me show you the documentation. So they really have separate documentation here about the lifespan and how the they expect the management of this lifespan should be. So it's uh, quite long. <laughs> Must be good, right? Um, so they're at least explicit, so you can read about it. But still, I think just from review, I think one driver got it wrong and using def res at the wrong point. I can't test it because it's very architecture specific. I think it's Qualcomm. I'm not sure. I'm not blaming them. I'm just, I don't have that hardware. I can't test it but it seems that the other drivers do it right. But right, what does mean right? This is an example how this auxiliary bus is used. Uh, so first you re, uh, request the bus. You do, I don't expect you to understand that in detail. I just want to give you the impression of how this looks. So we request, request the bus itself. We, for, uh, it seems you can use uh, managed devices for that. Uh, then we want to have certain devices on that bus. We can't use 
dev rest for that because they have separate lifetimes. So we use KZ alloc. So we have a mixture of those two. This is already where, yeah. And then the auxiliary device does not have all the uh, fields the dri this driver needs. So it puts a wrapper around the aux device with the aux device itself and the additional information it wants to store. It needs a unique number, so we need this IDA to get a unique number. And then it starts filling the stuff with like, I mean, aux bus, aux device, raspa, aux dev dot name. I, this is not exactly short, this is not exactly readable, and I think it's kind of fragile. So you need all, where is my pointer? Here, all this code for one device. And since they want to have a second one, they do it all over again for, for the other device. I think this is not maintainable code. Oh, easy to read, easy to understand. I think it's easy to get something wrong in there. And I, I mean, Greg Crowe-Hartman likes this subsystem, I have been told. But uh, with that IPI, I, I'd like to meet him soon. I would suggest something like this. And this is really the pattern I like in general. And this is probably also the pattern i squash subsystem will um, evolve into. You have here your private struct and fill it with stuff and then you allocate the device you want to use later. Well, I want, no, well, I need more. <laughs> <laughs> you allocate the device and the core will take care of all the bookkeeping which is needed for the embedded or for this struct device, which is needed by the subsystem, not by the driver. And then w you get a device back and then you can fill the fields which are needed. If you still need to do something special, you can have an optional release callback. But if it's, if you don't really do nasty things, most drivers should be able to get without that. And then once you're done with that, you give this uh, object to the um, subsystem again and it will do the rest, especially wh when unbinding. This is what SPI does, this is what NetDev does. This is a pretty common um, structure in the kernel and I think we should apply it everywhere where we can. So far it worked. It has other benefits but I can't, uh, can't mention them right here because I'm already short of time. Uh, to my surprise, USB gadget was also reported. Um, because there was a mixture of release function and def M. I was surprised because USB is usually the ones who get it totally right because they know magically disappearing device best, <laughs> I think. Um, and indeed, I could not trigger a problem, but I still want to find out, but I need to investigate this. Either I was not triggering the right problem or they're actually safe, but I d haven't understood why. So their USB gadget is still kind of an open target. But maybe, depending on my investigation, I might have bad news for you in the future. <laughs> my conclusion, the first summary is not so surprising. We have different kinds of lifecycle problems in the kernel. I was just presenting these def res embedded complicated thing. There are even more. Some of them are really long lasting. If you think about MTD, like with the command from 2009. With the ones I was researching here, def mk.alloc cannot be blamed for it. I mean, you can do the same mistakes without it. But uh, it, as I said before, it makes it easier to fall into the trap and enabled me to do this initial start of research because def mk.alloc is always wrong in this situation. But as with such uh, research, if you answer one question, you get at least three new ones. Uh, further research activities, I see I would like to, I think it's possible to um, have a coccinelle file. Also finding this manual ones where you use kz alloc and use k free not in the release function, but in the remove function at the wrong place. I think this can be encoded in coccinelle as well, and then we get likely more hits. And then as I said, to limit the search space, I was only scanning for struct device. For a complete thing, I should scan for all struct K objects. Then, we, then I will get the character devices, the CDFs and all that, and there's more. 
And um, when I found this one driver which tried to solve the situation with an empty release function just to silence the driver core, I think we can check for that as well. There might be corner cases where this is okay, but in general that's indicating a problem and somebody not understanding what's happening there. So we should check those as well. Potential solutions, uh, I already mentioned uh, pushing the responsibility to drivers. There she seems to be agreement that this is not a good thing to do. In Laurent's talk, he just, I think, mentioned a garbage collector, I think only for completeness, because everyone who hears this is like, oh, no, I don't think this is the way to go. Bartosz had a nice idea. There's a underscore underscore cl cleanup annotation you could use where you, if you call a function, you already define the cleanup function. And if you combine this with ref counting, you can make sure that things will happen magically. That's the re research to be done. I th from my gut feeling, it is technically possible, but it's a paradigm shift because you usually, we, in the kernel, we're used to, you allocate something, you free something, and this would be different. And so even if it's technic possi technically possible, I think Bartosz has to convince a lot of people <laughs> to get this into mainline. But maybe it's worth it, I don't know. My preferred solution is what I said before, do this thing with alloc, ask a subsystem to give you a prepared struct, and then you work on it and then you pass it back to the subsystem so um, it will do the magic it needs to do for the devices it uses itself. What you do with your own resources, it's your thing in the driver, but this separation needs to be made, I think. But converting i squared she, for example, to that, I mean, I have more than 150 drivers, which technically need to be converted. This is a lot of work. Yeah, I just, and even more lifecycle issues exist. I mentioned character devices where the platform device go away from video for Linux. I know there's some, Ger told me about like dependency hell where he cannot unbind this device because another one is gone. And, uh, DRM, okay, sorry, but no, it's all media. <laughs> 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 so uh, there's also stuff, and um, then there's this case that there are some existing protections which are not perfect yet. There are race conditions, they all need to be audited. Plenty of things to do. And since safety is a bigger topic this, uh, this time, I, I want to mention that. As far, I, I have only half knowledge about safety, but I know you can't audit Linux kernel as a whole. So what you do is you dec describe processes, how you handle if something goes wrong, and then this uh, gets accepted or not. So I think and, uh, our process, if an issue regarding lifecycle of objects in Linux device drivers is discovered, and I really mentioned device drivers here, I think the kernel core kernel code is way better looked at and um, I don't expect such as let's say simple bugs to be present in the core but in drivers it's quite present. The process is we add it to the list of already known lifecycle problems. It is agreed that fixing these issues would be great but nobody does it because there be dragons and it's simply a lot of annoying work. This is I think kind of the status quo we have with lifecycle issues now in the Linux kernel. So that brings me to my last slide, the future. I think it doesn't look too bright. I don't expect too many things to change in the near future because the problem is not like, it's not like, oh, that's an interesting problem, I can go for it. What is kind of interesting is what I did, do research, where is this problem? Where can I find more uh, instances of this problem? This is kind of fun. But if you then see, okay, I need to fix the whole subsystem, ah, nah, that's so. And so I could, I would, I guess we see some of these fix me still in 10 years. If not, somebody is uh, throwing a lot of manpower and money to the problem. So um, raising interest in the topic and raising funding will be, I think, the necessary first step because you, this is no part-time work. I will try. We will see. Until then, I, I personally will still start fixing, fixing the i 2 c subsystem. Let's see where we go with that. At least f because of this talk, virtual I.O. is now fixed. At least one good outcome, right? 
And I want to support Ren uh, thank you, Renaissance, because they're partly supporting this work. I should mainly do other things, but it's okay for them if I spend time on such things. And of course, Coxinel, it's such a great software. I don't know how many bugs it already eliminated or found or whatever. I love it. And with that, just five minutes late, but you still get some snacks, I promise. <laughs> this is the end of my talk. Thank you for being here, and I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah. Enjoy the conference. Okay, let, let's pretend we have time for one question. <laughs> so it has to be the best one. I can't say I understood everything from your talk, but um, I'm thinking, would it be possible to teach DevRes uh, to do something special for uh, reference counted objects? So that somehow that interaction, that bad interaction is solved in DevRes itself? It's probably too difficult to answer that immediately. <laughs> I don't think so, because as I said, um, there's a different level of nesting where the actual reference counted object is. And um, with that already, I see problem to teach DevRes that. What Laurent mentioned in his talk is that DevRes is mainly misunderstood. When DevRes was sent mainline, it was clear the promise was that refer the, the uh, objects tied to the device will be removed on unbind. He clearly said that. And then the next slide, super funny, what people read was it will remove that at the magically, magically at the right time. <laughs> That's what people hope for. That's what they want, right? <laughs> But uh, this is not the promise of DevRes, and I need further, I would need a little bit of hacking and trying out, but I don't see, see piggybacking that on DevRes is the right way to go. I might be wrong with you, that, but my gut, it's just a gut feeling. So, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>